Hello. Hey, Mom. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm alive and grateful. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got a lot of people saying the same thing when they call you. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I think they got it from you. They, of course they did, and I probably got it from somebody <laughs> else, so you know. And you probably got it from somebody else. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, Mon, listen, yeah. I got a question uh -huh. for you. Um in a couple of weeks, it's going to be Mother's Day, and I have a young lady at the church uh, by the name of Julie who's going to be speaking. Uh huh. And she's got a little child, maybe six years old, a little daughter named Reese, and she's married to one of our ministers. Uh, her, his name is David. So it's David and Julie Heiliger, and they're a great couple, great family, good leaders in our church. Well, anyway, she's going to be speaking, and I wanted you to give her uh, just some words of wisdom. So I wanted to record this call and have some words of wisdom from uh, Mrs. Icy Anderson Jackson to this young uh, mother and all the mothers in our church, regardless of the ages of their children. You're such a woman of wisdom. I just thought that uh, we could learn from you and you could really encourage her as well. What do you think about that? know about that. When do you want this? Uh, before the second Sunday in May? No, just right now as we're talking. <laughs> oh, you mean right off the top of my head. Exactly. I don't want you to have to think about it. I just want you to um, tell me what you think would be good wisdom or like you were speaking to her directly. What would you, what kind of wisdom of words would you give her as a young mother? As a young mother? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure, but I know it's a lot of responsibility uh, going uh, with being a mother, whether it's young or old, and you'll most certainly uh, want to bring the child up in the fear of the Lord, because mm -hmm. the Word tells us to train a child in the way he should go, right. and they're old, they will not depart from it. Mm. But also, uh, the word uh, encourages us that uh, to be parents is really a blessing from the Lord. And um, you can't expect the uh, children to be perfect, mm -hmm. but uh, you can uh, teach them, and hopefully, uh, you know, they will accept Christ when they're old enough to understand that's the way of life. Are you saying that I wasn't perfect, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's do it this way. I'm really proud of you, <laughs> and I thank God for all of my children. But then uh, we have to be careful. We don't want to uh, be too boastful because mm -hmm. uh, we know God resists the proud, but to give the grace to the humble. But mm -hmm. Then we want to encourage them in doing well and uh, living in the type of world that we have. So uh, one last thing: any warnings uh, as a mom when uh, somebody uh, is being a parent? Are there any uh, anything that you would warn her about? Well, uh, you have to uh, practice uh, the fruit of the spirit. You know, and one of them is having patience. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, you add the others to it. I think it will make a very, um, uh, you know, happy home and parents and children. Yeah. So I guess that's about all I would like to say. You know, you just have to be prayerful and do the best you can and uh have to give them time to, you know, grow up and make some decisions for themselves. But if they have the proper training, mm -hmm. it helps along that line. There you go. Well, Ma, you gave some great, great wisdom. And I thank you for being such an awesome mama. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you, I'm proud of you, son. Hi, Bridgeway. How are you today? I just want to start off by saying thank you, Dr. Anderson, for giving me the opportunity and the privilege of getting to share today. And I also want to thank you, Ms. Anderson Jackson, for your words of wisdom. I just really appreciate the fact that you said the encouragement to parent out of the fruit of the Spirit, which is a reminder that I need in these unusual days 
when I'm home a lot with my daughter and there's distance learning happening and I just needed that word of encouragement, so thank you. I've got to say that if you could parent Dr. Anderson, who I'm sure was a handful at times as a child, into the person that he is today, then yours is advice that I definitely want to heed. Thank you for pouring into the lives of all of your kids and to all of you moms. Thank you for pouring into the lives of your children. Of course, your investment day in and day out makes a difference in the lives of your kids. But like Ms. Anderson Jackson, the investment that you put in now as a mom is really setting the stage for future blessings to be poured out to many people who will one day know your children, those who don't even know your kids yet. So thanks for doing the work and being a great parent. Being a mom isn't easy. Being a mom and dad during a world pandemic takes parenting to a whole new level, doesn't it? See, for those of us who are moms, it's a great task that we have. And I think that it's always been aware, we've always been aware of this as parents and as moms, but uh, particularly in the past couple of months, I think we've been acutely aware of our desire to be strong and brave and patient and wise and loving and present for our kids. Because in these unusual times, we want our kids to know that as far as it depends on us, that they're gonna be safe and they're going to be cared for and they're gonna be loved and they're gonna be okay through this pandemic. And big picture, we wanna be these things for our kids because we want them to learn how to become these things. And of course, there are times where we are these things, but if we're honest and we're real with ourselves, there are plenty of times when we're also weak and scared and impatient and foolish and self-seeking and distracted. But I just thank God that by His grace, He allows us to parent our kids, whether in normal circumstances or in crazy ones. But in addition to all the things that I just listed, moms in particular are known for, or at the very least stereotyped, for being worriers. Now, what is worry? Well, worry is uncertainty over actual or potential problems. It's dwelling on uh, difficulties and troubles and beginning to feel upset or uneasy. Now, before we move on, I just want to take a moment to say one thing, and that is we all worry, every single person. However, there are times when anxiety can become so constant and so consuming that it can interfere with the ways that we wanna live our everyday lives. And this is when it can potentially move into what we would call clinical anxiety. Now, if you're a person who struggles with anxiety at that level, I, I just wanna say, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with your spiritual life. And I wouldn't want you to um, finish this time out today and think that if you were just more spiritual, then all of your anxiety would go away. Um, the fact is, if you're dealing with anxiety at the level that you can't live life the way that you want to live it, then it is wise and appropriate and healthy to seek out um, professional help in order to learn how to manage that anxiety. Now, as I said, when it comes to moms, all of us are known for being worriers. And that was before this coronavirus even broke out. But I looked up online just to find out some quotes. So like what, what is, what's out there on the internet that says things about moms and worry? And I wanna share a few quotes with you that I found. The first one is this. Telling a mom not to worry about her child is like telling water not to get wet. Mothers don't sleep, they just worry with their eyes closed. And perhaps my favorite, a worried mother does better research than the FBI. And finally, a mother is always a mother. She never stops worrying about her children, even when they are all grown up. 
See, we try to make it sound respectable or even admirable to worry about our kids, but God has a different outlook for us. Instead of almost aspiring to worry, God says, do not worry. There's an author and his name is Jerry Bridges and he wrote a book called Respectable Sins, Confronting the Sins We Tolerate. It is a convicting little book, but a good read if you ever wanna check it out. But in his book, Bridges says, when we say do not worry or do not be afraid, we really mean it as an encouragement or a comfort for one another. But when God says do not worry or do not be afraid, it's a command, a moral will of God. So not just comfort, but also a command. And this verse where it says, do not worry, comes from one of our key verses today, which is Philippians 4, 6. And the verse doesn't stop there. Paul, the author of Philippians, he says, do not worry about anything. But as parents, we think there has to be an exception, right? We actually have legitimate things to worry about. We might, in a very heartfelt way, say to God, God, my pregnancy is high risk. God's response, do not worry. But God, my, my child doesn't look and act like everybody else. What if he or she gets bullied? God's response, do not worry. But God, my child might get sick. God's response, do not worry. Do not worry about having enough money to put food on the table. Do not worry about your children learning how to navigate the world of social media. Do not worry about your children's choices of friends. Do not worry about how your children are gonna catch up on learning after missing a semester and a half of school. Do not worry about if you parent your children as well as your friend or your neighbor or your family member. Do not worry about who your child is dating. Do not worry about what your child is doing on his or her dates. Do not worry about how you're gonna afford your children's college tuition. Do not worry about your children getting good paying jobs. Do not worry if your children decide not to follow Jesus. Do not worry about anything, nothing. And just in case those of you who aren't parents think that this message today doesn't apply to you, well, yes, we're talking about parenting today, but Philippians 4, 6 isn't restricted to parenting. You know, it is Mother's Day, but this is an all the time in every area of life verse. Do not worry about anything. So for those of you who aren't moms, do not worry about the fact that you lost your job and how you're gonna make ends meet because of this pandemic. Do not worry about your relative who is sick and vulnerable do not worry about the big life questions like, am I going to figure out my purpose in life? Why am I here? Or will I get married one day? Do not worry. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Julie, this sounds kind of ridiculous. I'm sure that this isn't really possible. I mean, shouldn't I care as a mom, as a parent about my kids? Shouldn't I care about their healthy and safety and their health and their safety and their future and their decisions? And shouldn't I care about paying the bills and putting food on the table? And the answer to those questions is yes, care, but do not worry. Well, you might ask, what's the difference? What's the difference between worry and genuine care and concern about someone or something? When does genuine concern cross the line into worry? And I think those are great questions and I've been wrestling with that as I've looked at these passages. And I observed something interesting when studying uh, Philippians a little bit. And I'm no expert in Greek, but I did learn that the original word for worry in Philippians 4, 6, is the Greek word merimnao. Do not merimnao about anything. But I actually want to direct your attention a couple of chapters back for a minute. See, in chapter 2 of Philippians, verses 19 to 22, 
Paul, again, the author of Philippians, he is writing to the Philippians saying how he wants to send one of his right-hand men to visit the Philippians. And this man's name is Timothy. Now listen to what Paul says. Paul writes, if the Lord is willing, I hope to send Timothy soon to you for a visit. Then he can cheer me up by telling me how you are getting along. I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares about your welfare. All the others care only for themselves and not for what matters to Jesus Christ. But you know how Timothy has proved himself. Like a son with his father, he has served with me in preaching the good news. Did you see that phrase, genuinely cares, in verse 20? It's the same word, merimnao. So in one instance, Paul is praising Timothy for his concern or merimnao of the Philippians. But not long after that, Paul is saying to the Philippians, commanding them even, do not worry or merimnao about anything. So clearly there's a positive application to this word and there's a negative one. So what is the difference between genuine concern and worry? Well, genuine concern is good, but worry distracts us from God. Healthy care and concern does not do that. The very nature of worry is that it distracts. Worry takes our focus and it shifts it off of God and it puts it on a situation that may or may not even be reality. And when we begin to worry, there's often another emotion that um, is quickly behind. And many times that's fear. I mean, why as parents do we worry about our kids? Often it's because we're afraid. We're afraid that our child will get hurt or in trouble or maybe experience some sort of injustice. And those are the more noble reasons for why we fear and worry. Other times it's not so noble. I've been guilty of this one. Sometimes we worry about what our children will decide to do or not do because we fear what other people will think about us as parents. Ooh. And so there's worry, which can lead to fear. And many times when we start to feel afraid, control can begin to rear its ugly head. See, when we worry, God begins to appear smaller than our circumstances. It's like when Peter stepped out of the water, out of the boat and began walking on the water. See, when his eyes were on Jesus, he found himself in the midst of a miracle. But when he started getting distracted or worried by the waves and the wind, well, it's then that he began to sink. All of a sudden, the power and the love of Jesus were second to the raging storm. And that's what worry does. It kicks Christ out of first place. That's why, as the author Jerry Bridges says, worry can lead us into sin. See, it attacks our trust in Jesus and it makes us doubt his love and care for us. And not only that, but it distracts us from the reality that God is sovereign and he's in control all of the time. Healthy concern does not do those things. So you might be thinking, well, this is all well and good, but still it seems harsh or unfair for God to command something like this. I mean, why would God say such a thing? But the fact is that God does not command us not to worry because he wants to point a finger at us and say, oh, see how you're falling short. And like he wants us to experience guilt and shame for not measuring up. That is not the heart of God. I mean, honestly, friends, I think that God commands us not to worry is because he knows that there's something better for us. He actually has an invitation for us. He wants to offer us peace and a peace that reaches down into the very core of who we are. See, Philippians 4, 7 says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Notice that word guard. What will our hearts and our minds be guarded from? Well, worry. 
See, and God wants to give us a peace that stands guard against our worry. We don't have to do the guarding. His peace will do it, do it for us. Isn't that amazing? So how do we get this peace? Well, if you know these verses well, then you know that there's a section that I've left out. I want to say what these verses do not communicate. Here's what Paul does not say. He does not say, do not worry about anything, then you will experience God's peace. No, the absence of worry does not cultivate God's given peace. See, that's one thing I love about these verses. Paul doesn't seemingly throw out some verse and then stop writing and say, there you go, that's the end of it. See, instead, he gives us a replacement for worry. He tells us the key for receiving God's peace. And this is what he says. Here's a whole two verses together. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So how do we get God's peace? Well, there's been one word that's been on everybody's hearts and minds for these past couple of months. COVID-19, COVID. We hear it every day. We talk about it about every day. And instead of just associating this word with worry and fear and death and disease, I want us to start to redeem this word and encourage us to start to use it to remember these verses in Philippians. So first is C, cease your worrying. We've been talking about this. Do not worry. See, the fact is that worries will come our way. These verses do not promise anything against troubles. Worries will come our way, but we have the ability to focus on the one who is greater than our circumstances. How do we do that? Well, we go to the second letter, which is O. O stands for openly talk with God. Pray. Pray about everything. Do not worry about anything, but pray about everything. Everything, all things, each thing, anything. If you're worried about it, pray about it. See, Paul isn't simply saying that you replace worry with prayer. He is saying that, but it's something much deeper than that. He's actually saying that prayer is the means by which we combat worry. So if you want to get rid of worry, pray. Moms, this is how I say it when it comes to parenting. A praying parent is a peace-filled parent. You're not a parent? Okay, a praying person is a peace-filled person. Why? Because when we pray, God does something supernatural for his children. And Jesus modeled for us how to pray, didn't he? The whole first part of the Lord's prayer is focusing on the Father, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed isn't a word that we tend to use much these days. So you might um, replace it with other words in your mind, like revered or loved or honored be your name. Your kingdom come, Father. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This type of prayer is a prayer of trust. It's our declaration to keep the Father first. And when we pray in this way, well, then worry begins to lose its standing as first place in our hearts because God does something supernatural when we pray. But we don't just pray however we want. Paul gets a little more specific. So not only do we cease our worrying, not only do we openly talk to God, but we, were, we voice our requests. And that's the V in COVID, voice your requests. See, Paul writes, tell God what you need. And other versions say, let your requests be made known to God. So when you have a care or a concern that spills over into worry, then ask God for what you need in order to combat that worry. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares for you. See, let's not miss these applications. Paul puts it all right in there in these verses for us. He's so practical. 
You want to have peace instead of worry? Pray. And don't only pray, but voice your requests to God. Not just um, what you want, but what you need. And if you're not sure what the difference is, pray and ask for wisdom. But Paul gives one more application step. Not only do we openly talk with God, not only do we voice our requests, but we also intentionally thank the Lord for all he has done and all he will do. And that is the I in COVID, intentionally thank the Lord. How can we be thankful when worry is knocking at our door? Well, we focus on the qualities of our heavenly parent. We can be thankful that he has taken away all barriers of us being separated from him. We can be thankful that he invites us to cast our cares on him, that he wants to hear from us. We can be thankful that he is a God who delivers on his promises. And when he says he will give us his peace, when we do as he commands, then he will come through and on and on and on. See, in order to be thankful, we need to remember who our perfect parent is. And the fact is, sometimes we might not feel very thankful. Sometimes saying a word of thanks might feel a little hollow. But you know what? This is a conditional promise. We are told what to do in order to get God's peace. And a spirit of thankfulness is one of the things that we are told to do. Be thankful to God. And so if you're in a time in your life where you're saying, oh man, I don't really feel thankful, speak out your thanks for God, to God and ask him to take the words that you're speaking and to move them out of just words and to sink them down into truth in your heart. He will take us as we are because he is a good, good father. Now, when worry comes, what do we do? We openly talk with God, we voice our requests, and we intentionally thank the Lord. Because a praying person is a peace-filled person. And parents, a praying parent is a peace-filled parent. And when we do those things, we get to experience the D in COVID, which is the light in God's promised peace. So please join with me in seeking to redeem this word, COVID. Let's not use it just to simply discuss this virus, but let's use it to remember Philippians 4, 6, and 7 and God's beautiful promise to us. Now, uh, as you have heard, I am the mom of a six-year-old, a kindergartner named Reese. And she is full of energy and she loves to just be outside and she comes alive when she's outside. Now, there was a weekend in January, this past January, that was just beautiful. It was almost 70 degrees and our family wanted to get out and enjoy it. So my husband, Dave, and I decided to go to the Billy Goat Trail on the P Potomac River. Now, this trail is one that Dave and I have been to plenty of times, but it was our first time taking Reese. It's a little bit of a difficult trail. It's very rocky, and there's a little bit of climbing that's involved, uh, but Reese loved it. She just was thrilled to be out with us. But there was one part in the trail that was a little bit slippery. It was rocky and a bit sandy, and you really had to watch your step. And at one point, Dave was in the front and Reese was in the middle and I was bringing up the rear. And I noticed that Reese was saying something and I couldn't quite hear her, but I was curious to know what it was. So I uh, just quietly got up behind her so I could listen to what she was saying. And I realized that she was encouraging herself. And this is what she said very seriously. She was saying to herself, look at Dada, look at Dada. Don't look behind, hold Dada's hand, and everything will be okay. And I had to stop us, and I had to write those words down right away, because I felt like God was just striking me in that moment. And I thought to myself, is that how I view God? Do I come to God in that way? What if when worry knocks at my door, if I were to say, look at dad, 
look at dad, don't look behind or I might add to the right or to the left. Hold dad's hand and everything will be okay. Not that everything will feel okay. Not that everything will turn out how I want it to turn out. But everything will be okay in the fact that my God loves me. My father holds me secure in his hand and he will stand as my firm foundation no matter what slippery road comes my way. Mothers who are also followers of Jesus, let's work together to create a new narrative for mothers. Let it not be said that those who are followers of Jesus who are also moms have a reputation for being nothing but warriors. Instead, let's train ourselves for battle. Let's learn how to become warriors, warriors who fight the worries of this life on our knees. To all of you moms out there, you biological moms, adoptive moms, stepmoms, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, godmothers, spiritual mothers, any of you who care for the kids in your lives. Happy Mother's Day to you. May God bless you with his peace today.